Point two, learn nonviolence. Great. So you've really set the stage now. You've cleaned out the commercial imagery in your mind that's telling you that you're small, helpless, empty, uh, and that you'd only be made happy by consuming external things. You have slowed your mind down and kind of poised it for taking in positive imagery. Uh, you have some pretty good impulse control coming along. So if you go out on a picket line, for example, if you're an activist and there's a threat or any kind of threat, I mean, we're all faced with threatening situations, just go out on the highway, uh, you're, you're less likely to explode in anger. Now, how do you turn yourself into an effective force for social change? The answer to that is really simple. Nonviolence is the secret. Learn everything you can about nonviolence. When we say learn nonviolence, that is uh, deliberately kind of an ambiguity. There's at least two levels on which this wants to go forward. For one thing, you want to learn what the great nonviolence practitioners have taught. There is a science of nonviolence. I mean, just knowing that fact already puts you way ahead of the game. A large number of people think if they go out on a picket line and they smile, that they're being nonviolent. And well, yeah, okay, but they're not exhausting the power of nonviolence. One of our mission statements in Meta, and we do explore different mission statements at different times, but we always have the same mission. One of the things we say is that we are trying to help activists or anyone who wants to practice nonviolence to do so more safely and more effectively. And it turns out that there's a lot you can learn. Uh, I'm probably one of hundreds of individuals who have written in-depth books about this subject. Mine is called The Search for a Nonviolent Future. The Meta Center is one of, oh, maybe a couple of dozen of uh, organizations and websites that convey information about the history of nonviolence, the theory of nonviolence, the various fields of its application. But I would, of course, recommend our own website for, as one place to start metacenter.org, meta with two T's, and make a systematic study of this uh, subject. And you will find that as Gandhi always insisted, this is a science. It is a rich, intellectually rewarding subject. So that's the first part. But if you only learn about it and it only becomes head knowledge, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's inspiring, it's fun, it's wonderful, but your exposure to and assimilation of nonviolence will be quite incomplete. The other aspect is to test it, put it in practice. So you may read, for example, in my book, that if something produces anger in me and I decide not to express that anger but not to repress it, it will be converted into a creative force. Fine. But it's just going to stay there floating on the surface until somebody comes along, it, even it could be your dog or a machine, like my computer, that doesn't always do what I want it to do, and I get angry. Uh, I have a friend who was faced with an extremely violent, very dangerous situation in Africa, a child soldier, had just killed somebody and was pointing the rifle now at my friend. My friend had his sidearm and was reaching for his sidearm because that was his training. And suddenly the idea that occurred to him that maybe nonviolence isn't bunk. He had just had a seminar with me. Those ideas were floating around in his head. And in that crisis, in that desperately dangerous situation where seconds counted, he decided to give it a try. He put his hands out in front of him, empty, with no weapon, looked that young guy, that kid in the eye, and walked slowly up to him, disarmed him, and handed him over to people who could take care of him. Now, I bet you that my friend's knowledge, quote-unquote, of nonviolence was a heck of a lot deeper <laughs> after he had actually put it in practice. Now, I'm not suggesting that we do it, that we wait for such a dangerous, desperate situation. But any, any moment of the day when you have a fear, when you're greedy about something that you know isn't good for you, 
and especially when there's somebody threatening you. And you decide, I am not going to hate that person. I am not going to run away in fear. I am not going to do what he's threatening me to do. But at the same time, I am not going to disrespect that person or myself. You will then find that some creative response will come out of you that you didn't even know you were capable of. It'll happen 99 times out of 100. That happens to all of us all the time. But we don't have a theory. We don't have a model to put it in. So it just floats away. That's the virtue of learning about nonviolence academically. It gives you those explanations so that by using our mind and our heart together, it helps us to hold on to this precious topic. So go ahead, you know, read some books, get a hold of our website, metacenter.org. Look around for ways to put this into practice. And what you'll be doing is giving a very healthy substitute for the toxic commercial culture that you so wisely got rid of following point one.